If you ever find that you vacillate between hands during the Charleston and then you end up in a bad situation, one way that you can avoid that is to do an exercise that I call Charleston Chain Reaction. This is a great way to build your confidence with your decision making. If you have a set at home, give this exercise a try. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We'll just say we're the dealer for this exercise, and we'll take 14 random tiles. Then we'll create a mock Charleston with no jokers. I want to pick some extra tiles here, though, because I don't want to know what's in the Charleston. You want the tiles to be random, so you want to make sure there's no jokers in there. And there weren't any jokers in there anyway. All right, let's go ahead and make that Charleston again. Okay, multiples. I think. Building around multiples is the strongest, has the strongest potential. Here we have a pair of greens, a pair of nines, and a pair of sevens. So I'm thinking probably big odds. So I would just hold all the big odds. I don't know if we're going to be able to use these dragons or not. So I'm thinking big odds. And you do not have to pick a hand until you run out of discards. All we know at this point is we're playing the odd category. You don't have to pick a hand until you run out of discards. So let's go ahead and discard these three. But before we do that, let's take a photo because we're going to recreate this. We'll take a photo of that. And we're collecting big odds, so we're going to save these two. We have two discards. We have to pick a hand. When you run out of discards, in this case with the Charleston, we need three to pass. So we have to pick a hand, or at least whittle down our options. So I try not to pass dragons. Not only that, but these correspond. That would be a terrible pass. I'm thinking... We have like number potential with sevens and nines. I think I would probably give up the five, but even that is risky right there. I think we're gonna need to break up a pair here, and that happens sometimes. So if we're gonna break up a pair, I'm thinking I'd like to have sevens because we could play five, seven, seven, nine, the second hand down if we get five dots. Um, but the other thing you want to think about is if we broke up the nines, we would still be passing all those bams, which is risky. So in that case, I think what I would do is I would hold the sevens. I think I would focus on like numbers with dragons and break up the crack. And that way we can pass safely, defensively. Let's see what happens here. We'll take a photo there. Okay, we picked up a seven. If we're playing like, like numbers, I would hold it all. Let's just hold the nine because we do have tiles we can pass. Look what we just picked up here too, a six bam. We have two tiles to pass and we have lots of multiples here. We have one single. We have a six, nine, and sevens. I still think like numbers with sevens is the strongest. We could maybe do even a consecutive six, seven, but we'd have to throw away three multiples. So I think probably the strongest potential is still going to be like numbers with sevens. So I would hold all these. Now there is a potential quint in here if with all the sevens and a consecutive run. So let's break these up and see. We could even pass one of each suit here. 
We'll take a photo. And we picked up a seven. There's a six and a flower. So let's see what we have now. Let's count. Six, seven, dragon. That's going to be the third hand down under consecutive run. Two, four, six, eight towards that hand. If we played like numbers with sevens, we'd have two, four, six, eight. It's exactly in between. We are in in between Charleston. So we did the first Charleston. So we could stop the Charleston, but I wouldn't do that. I would pick a hand and break this up and continue the Charleston. So we need to either play like numbers with sevens and dragons or consecutive run with dragons. I'm thinking like numbers with dragons because if we played consecutive run with dragons, we would end up passing like numbers, which is risky. If we played like numbers with dragons, we could at least pass unique numbers. That's a bit of a risky pass, but we have no choice. We're gonna go ahead and pass these three. We'll see what we get here. Let's take a photo. We didn't get any keepers. So we have like numbers with sevens. Let's break the dots up a little bit. Either way, this is gonna be risky. Let's pass these three. Take a photo of that. Okay, like numbers with sevens. Let's keep this, this, all the sevens. Maybe we could even play the dragon hand with like numbers. And we have tiles we can pass even one of each suit. And we can take a photo of that. We picked up a seven. And we have three tiles to pass, including like numbers. So I would try not to do that. I think we are probably pretty close here to like numbers with sevens, joker bait, I think what I would probably do here is pass one blind. I like to pass defensively. I would pass one blind. Let's see if we can get a seven back. Yep, we got a seven back. Okay, so we have, we have two discards, really four discards with joker bait like numbers with dragons. So let's recreate this and see if another opportunity came up. Maybe, maybe, um, I still think like numbers was the best. I think maybe six, seven with dragons. Let's just see what happens. what we started with flower dragon five nine seven seven nine four one three two four four six okay so this is what we started with so let's see let's just put everything in order again okay so building around the multiples Right there, seven, nine, dragon. I would still hold the seven, nine and pass those. This is the same way I would start, hold all the multiples and then pick the tiles that support the multiples from the remaining tiles, in this case, big odds. And I would even hold this five bam. So we have tiles we can pass. I'm gonna recreate the Charleston now. Okay, there's the exact Charleston. 
So now let's see what happens if we focused on consecutive run with sevens maybe and sixes. Let's see, let's just see what happens. So we're going to discard these three. So here we have a six bam, seven, nine. So there's multiples again. So let's see what the multiples are right here. Seven, seven, nine, nine dragons, the dragons. I think I would still play like numbers with dragons. That's what I would do, like numbers with dragons. And because we have so many BAMs, I would break up the nine crack to mix it up. Let's pass these three. Oops. Okay, so now we have the six and there's another multiple and a seven. So here we have six, seven dragon, like numbers with dragons. And at this point we are on, we did right across, right across left. So we are on first left, right across left. We can pass blind, which I think I would do it. I would pass one blind. So I'm going to pass these two, pass one blind. So we got a flower and a six. Now we have a pung of sixes. So I'm thinking six, seven, sevens, nine. I would break up the nine and then I would have to pick a hand here. I think I would still play like numbers with sevens because if we played six, seven dragon, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight versus two, four, six, eight. Either way, it's six, one half dozen the other, but that would mean we'd have to pass like numbers. At least this way, we could pass singles. So that follows the same concept as passing as defensively as you can. I think I would do it. So now we have tiles we can pass. We don't need any of those. Let's break it up a little bit though and pass these three. Okay, we got a dragon. I think I would hold the dragon. We have a multiple here. Let's pass these three. We could maybe use that as joker bait. So there's a seven and a six, six, seven. Okay, we have one discard there. We probably could go ahead and get rid of the green or the red there. So we're kind of in between six, seven consecutive concealed hand or like numbers with sevens. We're in between. I think I would pass one blind. And we have tiles we can pass. So in this case, we did end up with two discards, but we're in between hands. If we played like numbers with sevens and the dragon, we would have two, four, six, eight, and we would have six discards. If we played six, seven concealed, we would have six discards and two pair of joker bait. So what I would do here is just discard these first and see what happens. If you would do anything differently with those passes, write it in the comment section. I think this one was kind of hard. All those six, sevens, nines in between consecutive run and uh, big odds. The only thing we had missing there that would have even complicated it further were eights. We had no eights. Anyway, I think this is a great exercise. If you have a set at home, give it a try and let me know how it goes for you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or maybe pick up an insight to the game that'll give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next Charleston chain reaction, using National Mahjong League rules, may all your picks be keepers.